Welcome back everyone. Today we are doing another book review slash summary, this time of No BS Time Management for Entrepreneurs by Dan Kennedy. Now I've mentioned before how I know that Dan Kennedy can piss a lot of people off, including me with a lot of his hyper Republican boomer nonsense. But that doesn't change the fact that he just so happens to be right pretty much 99% of the time when it comes to marketing and or business. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the best ideas from No BS Time Management for Entrepreneurs by Dan Kennedy. So the first great idea from this book is to continuously ask yourself this is what I am doing this minute moving me measurably closer to my goals. Now as a totally separate side note, I have pretty much zero interest in getting any tattoos, but I might actually or I am considering getting this one on my hand, which is something that says number one, what is my goal? Number two, is this getting me closer to it? Now, I have talked a lot about this before, how this might be the most important pair or set of questions to ask yourself pretty much daily and even more often. But the point is that you should consider number one, what do I want? which is actually, which most people actually don't know the answer to. But the second and maybe more important step here is asking yourself, is what I am doing right now getting me closer to that goal. So for example, right now I am recording YouTube videos, which let's just say there are easier things for me to do. But as I ask myself, what is my goal? And will this get me closer to it? The answer is a clear yes. So here I am. The second great idea from this book is kind of a old man rant against social media, which just so happens to be true, which is this. The richer entrepreneurs are, the less social media and frivolous behavior they engage in. Social media is mindless entertainment for the masses a means of feeling important for the chronically unimportant. Potentially as addictive as crack cocaine, it is damaging your ability to concentrate. It's a time sinkhole that can be very hazardous to your wealth. Now, I know that this sounds like an old man get off my lawn rant, which is, oh, social media these days, it's for the kids, it doesn't do anything. But this is something that you should consider. The point is that I know that this isn't necessarily causality, but it's more of a correlation. The point is that if you think of the richest people that you personally know, or even celebrities, literally pick anybody you can think of, the point is that on average, the richer somebody tends to be, generally the less social media they tend to engage in. Now, does this mean that social media serves no purpose? Of course not. Does this mean that nobody has started a business using social media as their main traffic channel? Also, of course not. But like I mentioned, if you're trying to start a software company, a business, a corporation, a literally any type of business, on average, generally, although social media definitely can help, usually the less you do of it in favor of more high leverage activities, the better. The next great idea from this book are these, which I grouped together again. Entrepreneurs are, by conditioned habit, often by ingrained compulsion, perhaps even by nature, problem solvers and mountain climbers. So the point here is that entrepreneurs by nature want to tackle and solve every problem that they confront or that they are presented with. But this is actually kind of dangerous because if your goal is to solve world hunger, let's say just as an extreme example, then just your entrepreneurial nature will automatically want to take on the other hundred of challenges and problems that you are presented with throughout your day and throughout your path. But this is actually extremely dangerous. So if you're just a normal digital marketer, let's say, and this actually happened to me, that every single step I went through, I said, oh, I should work on this. Oh, I need to make a lead magnet. Oh, I should work on that. Oh, I need to generate traffic. Oh, I should commit to that. Oh, I need to create uh, my email marketing autoresponder sequence. Oh, I should commit to that. 
oh, I need to work on lead conversion or follow up or webinars or Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or literally there are a billion other things that you could focus on. So the point is that if you are entrepreneurial by nature, which I assume you are since you're listening to me speak right now, you actually have to be extremely careful because it is in your nature to want to solve every problem that you run into. But if you do take on all of those extraneous challenges, let's say, then of course you won't have time or just the mental bandwidth to commit to the actual main problem and solution that you should be committed to. The next great idea from this book is this, relying on sheer willpower is rarely successful. An environment has to be created in which high self-discipline is supported. Now, I talk about this all the time, which is that actually there's another good book called Willpower Doesn't Work, which I suggest you check out. But the point is that everyone on Earth has a bias or tendency to think, oh, I have enough willpower. I'll be fine. Oh, in my office, I can have my dog and I can have my PlayStation and I can have a TV and I can have all these hundred other distractions, but I have enough willpower. I will totally stay focused on my work. But the point here is that no matter how driven or motivated or disciplined or whatever you want to call it, no matter how much of that you are, you still live in this human body, in this meat bag, which has inherent flaws and needs and distractions that we just can't control. So the simple story here is get rid of distractions. Now I know that sounds simple. I know you've heard that a million times. We all have. But the issue here is that no one does it because everyone overvalues their own willpower so they keep all their distractions around. But anyway, the point here is that it is a gigantic secret power of some of the most successful people in the world, which is to employ your environment. In other words, make your office, your environment, your network, your everything like that, make it conducive and make it useful to your goal. Pretty much the less you rely on your willpower, the better. The next great idea from this book is this. Business owners need to fire themselves from $10 an hour jobs. Many things can be delegated to people who will not do them the way you would, won't do them as perfectly as you would, but will wind up with the same result. This is pretty much a slightly long-winded way of saying outsource and delegate as much as you can. Now, Trust me, I definitely understand that sometimes it's not easy or it's not an easily available option to pay an editor or a graphic designer or whatever it might be their $20 an hour or more or less or whatever it might be. But if you are an entrepreneur, if you are aiming to start a business, to have a better life, to make 10K a month, 100K a month, whatever your dream number is, then you need to fire yourself from those low, I don't want to say low skill, from those easily outsourceable tasks. Now, I'm definitely not a financial advisor, so lawyers and people like that don't come after me. But the point is that however you can, even if it's by credit card, to be honest, then you should absolutely outsource your graphic design, your video editing, pretty much all of those basic tasks that are eating up a ton of your time, which somebody else, yeah, you probably will say, oh, but I can do it better. They don't do it as good as me. Well, they could probably do it as 80% as good as you, and it would ultimately lead to the same result. The next great idea from this book is this. Most people will find ways to avoid confronting productivity and will waste their time even if they have to work at it. Now, I agree with this idea so much, partially because I'm a little bit of a victim to it, eh, even though I don't like that word. But anyway, the point is that you will hear tons of people say, oh, I will exercise when I have time. I will write a book when I have time. I will do X, Y, Z thing that I should do, start a business or exercise or whatever it might be when I finally have time. But when you run into these people and they finished everything off their to-do list and you tell them, okay, so do it. 
That thing you said you didn't have enough time to do, now you have time. Do it. A lot of those people say, but there's a new TV show on, but I have to go to the store. In other words, people will literally actively try to waste time before they do the things that would get them closer to their goals. Now, as someone who is diagnosed with ADD or ADHD or whatever you want to call it, and I take my little medication and stuff. Anyway, the point is, as somebody who is somewhat afflicted with this idea, I totally understand that sometimes you just don't feel like it because of, I know there's totally other better videos that discuss this better than I can, how there's issues with the dopamine receptors and serotonin and other stuff like that, which I won't get into, which is all fine. Actually, this kind of connects to that point I just mentioned about how willpower doesn't work. That if you want to pursue any goal, whether it's starting a habit, quitting an addiction, reaching some goal or whatever it might be, then you should employ your environment to foster that against your own human nature to not do it <laughs> or to be lazy or to make excuses. Now, I actually have a poster right next to me, which I like to look at all the time, which is a similar idea. And I'm not going to rotate the camera because it's a huge headache to set up the right angle. But the poster I have next to me does say this. There is no expedient to which a man will not resort to avoid the real labor of thinking. And that quote is by Sir Joshua Reynolds, by the way, who I'm not really sure who he is. But anyway, the point is that most people will, not only will they not think or use their brain or do something productive, they will actively find excuses not to. And when they say, when I have enough time, when I have enough energy, when the kids are out of the house, when the dog is, isn't an issue, whatever it is, once that issue is no longer in play, they will find another excuse that is guaranteed. The next great idea from this book is this. The people around you rarely have a neutral effect. They either facilitate your accomplishment, they undermine it, or they outright sabotage it. People who are detrimental for you to associate with are not necessarily evil or of evil intent. They may all be good people, but that doesn't mean that they're good for you. So this is pretty much a more elaborate way of saying that old phrase that's you are the average of the five people you hang out with most. Now, we've all heard phrases and ideas like this, which is all fine and good, but nobody actually employs this idea and uses it to their advantage. So the point here is that those people around you, those friends, family, roommates, whatever it might be, they might be good people and nice and polite and all of those like fancy, you know, fuzzy bunny words uh, that you might like. But that doesn't mean that they are good for you. So if your goal, let's just say, is to start a business, if you surround yourself with five other people who also want to start a business, maybe they're a little more rude and impolite than you might like. OK, but if you surround yourself with those people, then that will pretty much rocket boost you towards your goal, as opposed to hanging out with nice people most of the time who find excuses and who transfer those excuses often onto you. The point is that if you give other people the chance, they will waste your time and they will drag you down. Now, I'm not saying your whole life should be like work, 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 focus, 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 don't have any fun, don't have any connections. Obviously, I'm definitely not saying that. But I am saying that you should at least be aware that everybody that you surround yourself, nobody has a neutral effect. They are either making you better or making you worse. Now, whatever you, decision you make after that is up to you, but at least be aware. The next great idea from this book is this marketing is the highest paid profession and most valuable part of a business. The person who can create systems for acquiring customers, clients or patients effectively and profitably is the money person. He is the equivalent of a high impact or franchise sports player. In other words, if you want to make money or get rich or otherwise accumulate resources, then you should focus most or even all of your time on marketing and sales. Now, I know that some people might say, oh, but management is important and hiring is important and operations and all of these other things that are all fine and good. And that's great. 
Now, all of those other things have a value and have a purpose, definitely, but businesses mean nothing if their marketing and sales aren't going. You can have bad operations. You could have bad hiring. You could have bad management. You could literally have bad sections of every part of your business and exist. It might be a little hard, but you can. But if you have bad marketing and sales, you're done. The next great idea from this book is this. The most expensive time is that consumed by unnecessary trial and error experimentation and reinventing wheels. Now, I'm somebody who sometimes doesn't listen to this advice, but the point here is that stop reinventing wheels if the path already exists. So in other words, if you want to launch a new coaching business, stop trying to figure it out yourself. Find somebody who's already done it and pay them whatever you have to or download their goods or buy their course or whatever it might be and listen to them. So whatever your goal is, if you want to lose weight, gain muscle, start a business, increase your sales, make a webinar, literally any goal on earth that you have. Stop reinventing wheels and trying to figure everything out yourself. I don't remember the exact number. There have been billions and billions of people who have already existed before you. And a lot of them have already solved that problem and have already achieved that goal that you have. So instead of spending all those weeks, months, even years trying to figure out how to accomplish that goal yourself, find somebody who already did it, who has a system or a plan or a method or a coaching program or whatever it might be and buy it. And that will cut your time to the result you're looking for into such a brief period that it would be significantly worth your time. The next great idea from this book is this. You want to deliberately reduce and restrict the amount of your time left vulnerable to random thought or association. In other words, try to minimize the amount of blank space on your calendar. So if you're planning out your week, like I kind of plan out my weeks on Google Calendar, and the point is that the more blank space you have on your weekly calendar, the higher the chance that you're going to fill that time with unproductive junk activities and tasks. So overall, I'm not saying you should overwork yourself or hate your job or whatever it might be, but the more you plan your time, the more your hours, minutes, or whatever are accounted for, generally the better off and the more productive you'll be. Try to plan out as much of your day as possible. The next great idea from this book is actually a set of ideas, so I'll just read them off here. And these are the time truths that Dan Kennedy lists here. Number one is time vampires will suck as much blood and time out of you as you allow them to. Number two is if they can't find you, they can't interrupt you. And number three is good enough is good enough. So all of those are pretty much kind of self-explanatory, but I'll zoom in on the time vampire one. This kind of goes back to your network that we mentioned earlier, that if you let people interrupt you, come say hi, call you, text you, email you. Now they can do that, but if you feel compelled to respond, the point is that if you give people the chance to interrupt you and waste your time, not only are they going to do it, they're going to maximize that and they're going to waste as much of your time as possible. So you want to not even give them the opportunity. So have you read No BS Time Management or any other books by Dan Kennedy? Actually, I know I have a few here, uh, but I haven't read them all yet. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any comments or favorites or any other suggestions as well. And the absolute most important idea from this book is to hit the like button and subscribe below. If you learned something interesting today, it does help a lot. For more help finding your niche, creating your program, or booking consistent discovery calls or five-figure clients, then check out my 90-day More Calls, More Clients coaching program below. Well, well, that wraps us up for today. Thanks everyone for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.